Ladybird is the coming of age story centered around Christine, Ladybird McPherson, a senior at a Catholic high school in Sacramento, California in 2002. She longs for adventure and to attend a prestigious college in a city with culture. However, with her family struggling financially and her pushy mother attempting to keep Ladybird close to home, Ladybird finds it hard to pursue her dreams, alongside the struggles of a teen in her final years of school. This film really stood out to me in December of 2017 when I was in a relatively new house and I experienced quite a lot of change in the last few years. And now I don't want to sound dramatic and all, but since watching this film at age 14, I've gone through most of my secondary school life watching this film once or twice a year. And overall it has changed my output on quite a few things from my style to a shift in my music and film taste, being exposed to the genre of coming of age. And despite the fact that me and Ladybird are different people with very different backgrounds and futures, I somehow relate to the film and Ladybird herself in quite a few ways. For one, I'm a teenage girl about to start a big chapter in my life, leaving school and going to university, figuring out what path I want to take and where I want to go, currently attending a religious school, although it's not as Catholic as the film. But really, besides that, I don't have that much in common with Ladybird, except perhaps the odd personality trait or two, as we are both INFPs. INFPs are imaginative idealists, guided by their own core values and beliefs. INFPs are sensitive, caring, and compassionate, and are deeply concerned with the personal growth of themselves and other. So what I wanted to know is, if I can only relate to certain aspects of the films and characters, how do I feel so connected to it, and how does it provide that nostalgic feeling? So for my extended project, I studied the idea with the title, How is the theme of nostalgia explored through the film Ladybird? Well, let's start off with the director, Greta Gerwig. Gerwig's coming of age film is generally very straightforward. So the protagonist hates her hometown and wants to move out, experience love and heartbreak, you know the story. But it's the authenticity of the film that is just beyond astonishing. The authenticity came from the characters, of course, as Ladybird is nostalgic, although she would never want to admit her love for Sacramento. The film feels so real and natural because it is somewhat biographical to its director Gerwig, who also grew up in Sacramento. Gerwig stated in an interview with IndieWire that she wanted to make the film look like a memory and to connect the watcher to the screen. In the interview, Sam Levy, who is the director of photography, and Gerwig stated that they took inspiration from the French photographer Lisa Safati. Safati's work consists mainly of portraits of young women. Gerwig took inspiration from her work as it really looks like the year 2003. As well as this, they took a look at Gerwig's own yearbook photos as she graduated in the year 2003, and from there began to colour copy to create a specific aesthetic, and over time began to see connections between this era, colour, and style of image. Each character had a certain colour, for example, Kyle. Timothy Chalamet's character always had a cyan piece of paper in the highlights and lavenders in the back whereas Ladybird would be much warmer toned, sweeter with oranges, reds, and yellows. Filmmakers manipulate the viewer's emotions with colour all the time. Warm red tones for romance, desaturated colours for apocalyptic films, blue colder tones for horror, to name a few. In filmmaking, colour is used to set a tone of a scene before any actor has even said a word, so for each character to have their own colour scheme created an atmosphere for each character and influenced the audience's view on each character unknowingly. Another major influence was the style. Despite the film being set in 2002, Lady Bird's style isn't necessarily the most 2000s look. Her outfits range from thrifted lace party dresses from the 50s to 90s grunge. April Napier, the costume designer of Lady Bird, stated she was in a beautiful moment of self-discovery and questioning and learning about herself. So when she, Lady Bird, gives her name to herself, she also uses clothes as a means of finding herself. Okay, Christine. Lady Bird. Is that your given name? Yeah. Why is it in quotes? Well, I gave it to myself. It's given to me by me. Okay. Take it away, Lady Bird. Of course, to produce a film that is set in the early 2000s, costume design is important. In an interview with Vogue, Napier stated that they didn't steam her clothes or hang them in her room. You can just throw them in a corner because that's real. That's how an actual person would do it, and that's what Ladybird would do. Costumes really make a character. Certain characters will have a staple item, such as seeing Kyle with a dark leather jacket or a coat of some sort, showing an aspect of hiding as he is a very quiet, introverted character. And then Ladybird, of course, with her iconic pink cast, reminding the audience of her stubbornness in the first scene of the film when she jumped out of the car. 
Ladybird's mother in her hospital scrubs, showing how hardworking she is to provide for her family, especially Ladybird. And overall, costume was just a major influence on the nostalgia of the film. Costumes can show growth from a character's opening costume to their final. Most importantly, it can give the audience the idea that the film was set in the early 2000s. With the post-production work, they added a film grain called Alexa Grain to make it seem as if the film were not filmed on digital, but however looking as if it had been filmed on a film camera. The use of Alexa Grain was very influential on the nostalgia aspect, as it reminded me of certain home videos of my childhood. Okay, so you're going for a walk? Yeah. All right, shall we keep walking? Yeah. All right, say bye-bye. Bye. Being brought up looking back on those videos, I've always had a vivid understanding of everything from the clothes, the technology used in those years, and therefore watching this film always made me feel like I was watching those home videos, which is why I think it resonates with me so much, alongside so many other people for many different reasons. Now one scene that particularly stood out to me and many others was the final scene. Now this scene in particular was really moving to the majority of the audience, including myself, because I think everyone realised, although no one would want to admit it, parents and guardians usually write about a lot of things growing up. The lessons they taught weren't shared to pester us as children, but was really just advice. And this last scene showed how sometimes, like Ladybird, all you can do is look back and say, Thank you. I'm... Thank you.